good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Right, good morning. Let's just straighten up that camera a minute. And get my lights organised. How are we this morning? There we go. Right, let's try and save any internet issues and put my little internet dongle right here in front of me this morning. I hope you're all feeling good. I am feeling okay, considering I drank a bottle of wine last night, but that's okay. Um, a little dehydrated. I've got my, my vitamins here. All right, so today I'm here at the shop by myself. It's closed to the public and I'm just going to have a day of creating for me. So I'm going to try and create on camera, off camera. I don't know. I just thought I would give it a whirl and try and do a little bit of something, something for me today and include you and take you for the ride as well where I can. Uh, as part of the picture to page show this weekend, we have been involved and we've got some fantastic specials for you. And that includes 15% off distress products, 15% off of Natalie May scrapbooking products, 15% off of Vicky Booten and paper rose products and 15% off of pattern paper. So that's fantastic. Um, plus we also have an additional 30% off of Scrap Effects products. So for those of you who love Scrap Effects, grab them before they are uh, out of our lives forever. Because as you know, Scrap Effects uh, have closed their business. So uh, for you guys, it's going to be fabulous to pick up some of those bargains. So today I thought I would do some more little pages in my DIY handmade journal. So this is, oh, look at that. This is a journal that I have put together yesterday in the live Facebook. I've put them together before. So it is my little handmade DIY journal. So, whoops. So this is the one that we put together in the class yesterday morning and in the live Facebook over at Picture to Page. So we've actually posted the links so you can go back and do that. Um, Susan, are you judging me on a whole bottle of wine? Because you best not be judging me on a whole bottle of wine, young lady. It was Friday. I had nowhere to be. And it was really tasty. Anyway, so this is our little do-up DIY journal. So I am creating the pages to go in our journal. Now, the journals don't need to be this arty-farty sort of look. You can put anything you like on them. So this is, this is one that's a little bit softer. This is what I created a little while ago in a live Facebook. These are rub-ons from Simple Stories. We've got, and these are rub-ons from 49 and Market. So you can make it look however you like. And they are so easy to put together and bind together, as you can see with the elastic. And the elastic comes here in the kit as well. So here is one here. This one has traveled a little bit um, and has done a few little trips around the sun, we're gonna call that. Had it a while and it's been, it's looking a little worse for wear. But these are the sort of pages that you can create in your little journals. So this is the one that I created uh, middle of the day yesterday. And then yesterday, late yesterday, I did this double page. You can go back and, <laughs> um, you can go back and, watch these videos again anytime you like. Rightio, so I'm just going to take out a page. Let's see what I'm going to take out here. Right, I'm going to take this page out, close that baby up, and I'm going to work here today on this page. So I'm going to fold that over. And because I'm working in a loose leaf journal, I have the ability to be able to do that, which is good. 
All right, so I'm just going to put a piece of paper towel under there and just give it a little bit of a roll because it's a little curly. Um, and I think I feel like doing something a little bit brighter this morning, uh, something that I've, I've got a whole bunch of stamps here next to me and I haven't exactly established what I'm going to do with them. Uh, Distress products from Tim Holtz are also on special at the moment. So I thought I might incorporate some of these. I uh, haven't really, I think I'm overthinking this morning, but that's okay. Right, let's just jump in and put some paint on my page. In fact, I'm just going to go standard straight in with some Dilutions paints, giving it a good shake before using. So this is Lemon Zest, and I thought I might just, I'm using my little messy mat in the background here. And just off camera, of course, right here, you can see that I'm using our paint stand to keep my paints all together to see. So I'm just gonna pop some yellow in the middle here. And I'm just brushing till I've got, adding the paint till I've got no paint left on my brush. I'm not gonna wanna add too much to this. Uh, a little bit of bubble gum. No, actually a little bit of magenta. Dina Wakeley's magenta. Oh, look, I didn't drink the whole... Look, come on, girls. I didn't drink the whole bottle straight up, okay? It, it was over a couple of hours while I was packaging collage paper because, oh, my God, our collage paper, of course, is currently sitting at 15% uh, off. So you guys have gone crazy for it. So 15% off meant I had to spend my evening packaging, which is fine. And, well, that's a bit light. Uh, and I had a, yes, I was watching Netflix at the same time. So, you know, it is what it is. All right, so what I feel like I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna work around my page and Yes, you do need more practice, Julie. And I'm going to add some more colours in a bit more of a blocky sort of style, layering into layering into that yellow, okay? Um, I'm staying away from the fluoro, and I'll explain why in a moment. I've put the fluoro out there because I want to add it after. So using a combination here of Paper Artsy, Dina Wakeley and Dilutions Paints. And just getting it on there and moving it around. Now some of these Paper Artsy paints are transparent. So that is gorgeous, which means just like fluoros, they are excellent for putting over the top and they are excellent for building color. So I love that. So here we go, I've kind of just and I'm mixing all my colours together here, like that. Now, this colour here is the Strawberry Daiquiri. Um, so, Strawberry Daiquiri is a fluorescent colour. It's not showing up very well as fluorescent on screen, but you'll just have to trust me. So, the fluorescent colour I'm putting over the top, so then it just gives it a bright pop but it does not go down as a, as a solid base because it has got that transparent quality to it. So I'm just putting that over the top. This is a really good idea in my head and it's just not coming together. I think I need more coffee. Here we go, here we go. Right, layer, layer, layer. I'm gonna add some fluoro pink. Yeah, baby, look at that. So this one is called Stoked by Dina Wakeley. Um, this is an excellent color to add to your stash. Um, that one and that gorgeous strawberry daiquiri are probably my couple of favorites that I use to give things a bit of a pop. Uh, and that's because they are fluoros and they just sit gorgeous on top. So there we go. 
happy with that. I'm washing my brush now. I'm going to come back to those distressed paints. I might use those a bit later today. Now, I'm a little snippy this morning. The wind is, is just, it's just a little breezy here. And of course, all my sinuses have just gone crazy. Purple. Julie, Julie said go to purple. Julie, no, no, not this morning. I did enough purple yesterday, um, which I'm impressed that none of you commented on. So thank you for that. Um, now, let's have a looky here. I've got an Art by Marlene a Fluoro Yellow. And I'm just going to pop. And again, you can see that when I put it out in the mat here, how how transparent that colour is. So this is where fluoros kind of lack their punch, but they sit on top of things beautifully. So I'm kind of, I'm not going over the whole thing, but I'm adding a nice amount just to give it a little bit of a pop. And then I'm going to add some stenciling in a minute and a little bit of stamping. So I'm doing a little art journal page, essentially. I'm doing a little page here where uh, I have a focal point, I'll have a focal point image and I'm building a page. So the process here is I've started with my background. So I've started with a background and the next thing I'll do is add some stenciling and stamping. Let's just dry that off. Stenciling. I think I want to add some stencils. I've got my pile of Natalie May scrapbooking stencils here in front of me. So these are all currently sitting at $9.95 and they will have a 15% discount for today uh, when you add them to your cart. Oh, I like the stars. Um, and I'm looking for, I'm looking for that. Okay, white paint. Do I have any white paint handy? No, I have gesso handy. So I'm just going to do a blob of that. And I want to add some, let's try and find a plain sponge here. Good morning, Michelle. All right, so I'm going to add some white, light white spots to my background. Okay, I'm just going to dab this on. Now, I, did, I don't want it to be a solid white. I'm wanting it to be a, a sheen of white, a tone of white. Using gesso means that it will have a chalky finish and not a, a plastic painty finish that you can quite often get from acrylic paint. Uh, for those of you who don't know, gesso is of course an undercoat and a sealer. So it is a excellent underwear for your crafting. Um, now, it's really important when you're stenciling something onto your page that you, if you are able to, build up your colour. So if I go into heavy, and you can see that I'm pulling the paint aside here just to get a nice little coat, but what's happening is I'm building up my colour. And then I'm getting some really nice bold dots here. do some down here and I am going to be stamping over the top of this now because we are using light uh, dots that are in a grid it's also kind of important to either line them up where possible or 
put them straight or and put them straight simply because it's going to be too much of a, a struggle on your eye to do this whole crisscrossy thing in the background that I quite often see happen. And that's because your eye fights with what's going on in the image. So you're building a background. We're not creating a focal point. So that means that we need to make it all kind of sit together quite nicely. And as you can see, I'm trying to line up some spots here and here. So then if I just pop these up the top here, then they're a little bit lined up. I don't know if that's the little bit of OCD in me, but it does look a little bit more pleasant on the eye. So good morning, Tegan. Yeah, look, Tegan, these are one of my favorite stencils is this one because you've got the big dots and you've also got these little dots here that you can add on after. And I really, really like to be able to line them back up easily enough and, and make them, you know, if I want to make my stenciling a little bit bolder, I can. And that's what I want to do over on this side. So now that that first layer of gesso is dried, some of these dots on the side, I just want to be a little bit stronger. So straight back in here with some more gesso to make those a little bit whiter. And I'll do the same thing down in this corner here. Okay, so building our background, we've done that with, with our paint and now we're going in and adding some stenciling, which is that bit there. Um, adding some, I'm gonna add another stencil and I'm gonna do some stars, which is this guy here. Um, so naturally, when you do purchase a stencil, they don't look like this when you get them. That's just me not cleaning my stencils. I think I need to bring my rubbish bin closer to my mouth. Because everything I've thrown at the bin I've missed so far. All right, so there we go. So I want to add some stars now. I don't want to add too many. Uh, and I want to add it in a colour that's going to pop on top here. So I'm going to use a contrasting colour. And I'm going to use Periwinkle Blue as my contrasting color. So this is the Dilutions paint. Uh, and I'm gonna go in with a clean sponge. And I'm only gonna put a few bits around the corners. So I'm pulling my paint out, giving a nice little coat onto my sponge, but I don't want to completely cover I don't want to saturate my sponge. Um, I just want to have a nice amount on here like that. And again, I'm building my color up and I'm going to work in the corners. Now, before I lift, I'm holding it down. Yeah, that's what I want. So you'll notice that I've put it not over the top of there, not on the top of that one, but alongside it. So I'll do the same thing up here. lightly overlapping onto those dots, but not completely covering them. There we go. And I'm gonna pop some down the bottom here. Just in three spots around my project. And the paint, I'm building up, so I'm putting on a little bit at a time. There we go, happy with that. Shazam, just gonna dry that off. So I do have another couple more live Facebooks today. The next um, one that I'm doing, I've decided I'm going to swatch the new Lindy's Magicals. There are new colours with Lindy's Magicals and it's time to have a play with them and crack out 
the swatches and have a bit of a play. So make sure you pop back at 1.30 to do that. All right, I think that I've got enough colour on here for the moment. I want to have a quick think about my focal point image and choose that and then I'll come back and add some stamping um, and build from there. So wipe that up so I don't end up with paint everywhere like I did yesterday. All right, so some of the stamps that I have pulled out are here. So I've got quite a range here. Some of them are still available online, some of them are not. We have got a huge range of stamps uh, currently on nataliemay.com.au. Make sure you have a look in our clearance section too because our clearance section has got a ton of All and Create stamps. So make sure that you pop over there and have a bit of a look because there's a ton there for you to play with. All right, so... I've got some of these ones I've got um, which I do like. Um, I'm looking for a focal point, so I'm looking for a key image. I think my bright background doesn't really say birds. I don't quite know what I was thinking there. So I will go with one of these images. Actually, I could probably go with two, but you'll have to watch me colour them in. Can you cope with that? All right, let's do a little stamping. Okay, sure you can cope with that. So I'm using my stamp press. Um, I highly recommend investing in a stamp press if you have trouble stamping. So there's a couple of different brands available. The brand, this one I've had for all of the years um, and it, I do find that they're much of a muchness. Yeah, look at her. Um, and I find that they um, they all do exactly the same thing. So what happens with a stamp press is they have a magnet that you can see is holding my paper into place. I take my stamp, just like I did then, pop it down here, put my magnet on, close the lid, bring it back up and it holds it in place. So the really good thing is, is if I stuff up my stamping and then need to go back and add more ink, I don't have to worry about trying to line up. Oh, where's my stamping knob? Not in arm's reach. Um, so yes, I don't have to line up. I can go back in and re-ink and go over the top and it lines up perfectly. So a stamp press, highly recommend investing in one. They are a tool that I didn't think I would ever use uh, after the million and 12 years that I've been working in this industry. Uh, I found that I am actually using it a lot. It does make things significantly quicker and easier. So now I have got this one called Hello Gorgeous. So I can just pop her down here. Magnet on, close the lid. Now the ink that I'm using is a black archival ink and of course you need to use a black archival ink because I want to colour these in with some watercolours in a moment. So I need to ensure that the colour is not going to run when I add water. So black archival is the go-to. Do not use Memento. Memento is excellent for using with um, for using with alcohol ink markers, Copic markers, etc. But if I use Memento ink, it's a common mistake that people make. They think, yep, yeah, perfect, it's going to work great. But it's it won't work because it is a water-soluble ink. I'm just considering grabbing, seeing if I've got one more of these ladies in my stash to 
do a third. Just chat amongst yourselves for a minute while I look through my unnecessary large pile of stamps. I don't believe I have one open and I'm not running out to the shop to grab another one off the shelf, so we're sticking with two. Okay, so you can see how easy it is to use a stamp press. Um, really, really good investment. Uh, not overly expensive for what they are, but they are fantastic for this purpose. Um, all right, so I might just quickly color her in. I have got my Altenew set of paints here. And I'm just going to grab oh, some fine, a fine paintbrush and colour her in. So where is my water spray? Because I need to wet that down first. Don't forget that if you're using watercolours, we need to add water to them. I know, it's obvious. I did actually think about using scribble sticks for this, but I'm just going to crack in here. Now I'm not doing this on watercolor paper. This is a this is the paper that we use for our packs of cards. So if you purchase a, a pack of cards from us, they're an A5 card. And what we do, what I tend to do, is I cut them into six by fours ready for stamping because the card stock is fantastic. It's a really lovely 300 GSM smooth card stock. And I love it. Uh, so I'm not being too particular here, but I am going for something nice and bright and punchy because that is what I have used in my background. All right, so I like to, just gonna add a little bit more depth here to her top. So what is everybody else up to today? Anything exciting? While well, you're hanging out with me. Sorry, I'm just wiping my nose so I don't sniff live on Facebook because that's just terrible. Um, okay, let's go with this colour for her shirt over here. So you can see that I've gone from this lady over to this lady, and that's because a common thing that we tend to do when we're using watercolours is go right up to the edge of the line and use watercolours, and then we go in with perhaps too much water, or we go in and we don't allow it time to dry and soak in so when we put the other color up next to it they bleed into one another and we don't want that to happen all right so i have gone in here and i forgot to paint her shoes there we go and i don't mind leaving a little bit of a white edge but really i'm, I'm ensuring that she is other than that perfectly beautifully coordinated um oh and just allowing a little bit of room. Oh, Lindy, you're not well, darling. Well, that's kind of sucky. I hope that you are going to feel better soon, darling. All right, so I'm going to use... I'm going to make this lady here lovely and bright. And I'm going to go in here with a bit of orange. Now, I've just done that and then realised, you know what, that's probably not the smartest idea because I've got orange in my background. But let's commit. I've made this too wet. So you can see here, me putting my paintbrush onto my paper towel is taking off some of that excess, okay? So I'm gonna jump in here with some red at the bottom of her skirt. So she's got a bit of a two-tone ombre little number on.
Okay, so just taking the colour off my brush and adding a little bit of water to help that blend in together. And I will bring these up to camera in a moment to show you because they can look pretty cool. All right, so I think this time I'm going to go in with some bright blue for this other lady's pants. So the paintbrush here that I'm using, this is one of the Altenew set of paintbrush, out of the Altenew set of paintbrushes. I do love me a nice fine paintbrush and the only reason I use these particular paintbrushes is for doing this. So they are really, really nice. So I think a set of, a set of five paintbrushes is about $39 or $40. Um, and they're really, really nice. They're really nice. So I've gone in with a darker blue at the top here for a little bit of shading and I'm just letting that dry like that. Now she has a little cuff on her collar and her sleeve. Um, I'm going to go in here with maybe this colour. What's this colour look like? Oh yeah, that's a good colour, that's nice. Whoops. A head cold is not a good thing at the moment. And of course, the minute you end up with any sort of head cold, everyone's like, oh no, have you got COVID? Have you done a test? So um, look after yourself. Drink lots of water. Let me mum you. Drink lots of water. Um, and uh, stay in bed. Get some Netflix happening. Or me. Or you could just watch me all day. But I'm only doing three today depending on how I'm feeling this afternoon um, as to whether I pop back this evening or I sit down and watch some Netflix or something like that but I do have um, a session back here at 1.30 and then again at 3.30 so um, right, so you can see here, and I'll bring it up to camera. I am going to let that dry before I do their hair. So I didn't overcomplicate it, but see how cool her skirt looks when you mix a couple of colours together? And her pants here have actually got a bit of dark blue at the top and lighter at the bottom. So let's just give that a moment um, to dry so I don't accidentally run my hand over it and I think I've done all the bits in colour that I want to do other than their skin and hair I might give them some lips um, a little bit of lip bit of lip love now I could probably go a finer paintbrush here but There's something said for going in with less is best and a light, lighter hand, I can tell you. But having some paper towel handy just to take off anything off your brush does make it really, really easy. Okay, so I'm going to pop these girls aside for a jiffy just so that they can dry off, um, except for that lip that's annoying me. So let me go take some paint off. There we go. Right, pop those aside, pop those aside, and let's get some stamping on our page. Uh, radio. I'm thinking I want to go... I've got no stamps out other than that one. So I want to start building something around the outsides, around the edges. Uh, a couple of rums helped a bit last night with your head cold, Linda. Good girl. We do not condone drinking here, but we are human. 
So this is a set called Chain Reaction from Visible Image. We actually, for those of you playing along at home, who may or may not have noticed, had a top up of Visible Image yesterday. Now I am going to use a stamp block for this because I want a nice juicy black stamp. Yeah. And I'm going to ink it. Whoops. I always apply, I try where possible to apply the ink to the stamp to get a nice border, a nice ink. I think that um, it makes a big difference. And I am a firm believer in re-inking your ink pad on a regular basis so that you don't get caught out. Radio. Um, what's next? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I've also got my Won't Let You Down stamp, which is this one. So these are also, if you don't have this one on your in your stash, it's a good little just a wordy one. Um, I do use this a lot, as most of you know, because it is a great neutral stamp. And you can see that I'm not re-inking um, because what I'm wanting is a real shadowy effect in the background rather than something super strong. And I'll bring it up to camera in a moment to show you how it looks. Uh, and I'm also going to use, from my Don't Overthink stamp set, this one here, which I don't use very often because it's quite strong. But I am gonna grab a colored ink, hopefully, if I can, I can put my hands on one straight away. And stamp in a different color using my archival inks. Pop my lid on that one. Hello, Tina. How are you, darling? All right, I'm going to use this bright one here. So this is out of the set of archival inks from Tim Holtz. Um, and of course, they are a distress product. So you will find them on special. Getting my colour on. And I'm going to test it first. And I'll just test it there. Yep, that's the colour that I want. And I don't want too much. I'm going to go up here. And then I will come down here. And it's really soft, okay? Can you see that soft little square pattern? Is that showing up on camera? It is. Okay, and because it's not in black, it's in this really nice light blue, it's not overpowering either. And that is what I was going for. And now, put it down, Natalie, stop. So Distress Products, by Tim Holtz are 15% off for today. All right, uh, one last thing I'm gonna do is, to my background, before I cut my girls out, I thought I might pop some hand-drawn leaves. So I think the girls are gonna go, you know, here and here, but I, I'm aware of them being grounded. They need to be kind of attached to something. So I'm going to pop, I need a smaller block. And I might do a little bit of double stamping here, which means maybe, maybe, baby, I might pop this on. 
and I might colour that in. Oh, ooh, ooh, here's an idea. Let's join them up. Yeah, that's working. And then I'll be able to, so you can extend it, of course. Um, and I'm going to colour in with my Life of Colour pens, the leaves. So we have our the last of our guest teachers being announced today. Um, about 2 o'clock this afternoon. You'll need to stay tuned for that little number. So for those of you playing along at home, that's enough. Uh, we have a few fantastic little guests, little guests, some fantastic creative women who have come on board to uh, do some classes for Natalie May scrapbooking. So we have recently introduced... Oh, I nearly said the new teacher's name. I have re we have recently introduced Claire from Art Journaler. So Claire will be doing a class with us. Claire is from the UK. And if you look up her Instagram, which is Art Journaler, you will be blown away. Um, Claire is a fantastic creative. Uh, we also have our, our brand ambassador, the super talented Naomi. Naomi is going to be doing a online class with us using Lindy. So I can't express how excited I am for that one. And the really cool thing is, is I'm going to be able to get to do both of their classes because, you know, it's all about me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait for that. Cannot wait. All right. So I'm just making a grey watercolour here. Um, simply because I feel that these girls don't need dark hair. They need a grey. So I'm mixing my a black and a white just off the mat here. And because they are super cute and animated, I may add in a little bit of purple in a moment and give them that sort of, you know, purple rinse feel if I'm quick enough here with my paint. So make sure you have a look in the clearance section um, to see if there are any really cool stamps like these because they have come down to about $8.95 or $8.55 or something like that, these little All and Creates girls. Um, and there's so many there. We have just decided that I needed to make a bit of a clean spot on the in the, on the shop floor here. Um, and that was just a case of taking a few things and popping them into clearance. There is nothing wrong with the products, of course. They are still new and relevant. Um, I just needed to make a little room. All right, so here we go, going in with a bit of the grey that I've just made for this lady. And I love that it's a, lots of different colours in there. And I might give her a little bit of a blue rinse. Always putting it on the side here first, just so that I can test the colour rather than putting it straight onto my page because, you know, that blue was going to be way too much to put on her hair. So she's got that blue twinge. And I don't have my paper towel handy, so I'm having to reach across, which is my bad. Yeah, I like it. Okay, there's a little bit of purple up in here, a little bit of blue up in here. Susan's just commented saying her um, Claire's YouTube is fantastic, so uh, make sure you take a moment to pop over and have a look. Okay, blowing on it. Skin tone. Skin tones can be tricky. So to create a skin tone, a Caucasian skin tone, I'm making a little pile of white here off this on my little mat. Lots of water, a really watery wash of white. And now I'm going to come in with a, a smidgen of orange. And you have to remember how powerful it can be. 
and then I'm going to go a smidgen of pink. And now we have got something that is absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to come back in with more white and lighten it up. And I've got something here that I can work with, but it still needs a bit more white, okay? So there we go. So we're going for a Caucasian skin tone um, and having the water handy is going to make a big difference here. So I'm going to go in here. to just bear with me a second so for some reason I can't talk and do this at the same time and I'm keeping the area inside of her glasses white I'm not going to be colouring that moving the colour around with my brush now this does take a little bit of practice to to do this don't forget her ears um, understanding how the water works and how the water on your brush affects what you're working on is, is a really cool technique, but it takes a little bit of practice. So you just do need to have a bit of a play. Um, I'm going to give her some rosier cheeks by making going over the top here and just dabbing that on. She's a little flustered because her blood pressure's up. She had a conversation with her grandchildren about the inheritance. There we go. So I'll do the same thing with this lady here. And I went in too hard. So let's take all the paint off my brush and spread it around. Now this lady, she's got nothing to worry about in life. She is single, she's happy, she's living the dream. Her, her husband passed away from an accident at a one of his 10 pin bowling. Okay, so she's, she's cool, calm, and collected. She's she naturally she's devastated, but you know, let's build a little story here. So she is now living her best life. She's got a trip on a cruise ship coming up. She knows that she might be able to have a little fling with a guy on a cruise ship. So, you know, she shaved her legs especially. She knows. She's happy now. She's comfortable with her life. Her, she's just got rosy cheeks because she knows she's going to meet a man on a cruise ship. So she's blushing. Okay, uh, do they need eyeshadow? I say yes. She needs a little blue up here. All right, I'll bring it up to camera. So you can see the rosy cheeks that I've added, and it's just about building up a little bit of colour there, okay? So the girls are looking kind of hot. Sorry, and out of focus. Now they're in focus. Um... Still wet, still need to dry. Paint away. That's the side. This here, I'm going to add some doodling with my black pen while this is drying before I hit it with the heat tool. So um, any black pen of choice is going to work. This one is today's pen of choice. And then I'm going to colour those leaves. I might do them with a white pen, actually, and then I can go over the top. So the Life of Colour pens are my favourite for doing this. This is the brush pen. Why have I chosen a brush pen? Because it's the one I can put my hand on at the moment. So I'm just going to go in with those little leaves here.
and I will go over the top with a black pen. Any sort of white paint pen will do the trick. And I could have done it in any other colour actually, it didn't need to be white. Now the hand drawn leaves stamp set are exactly that. They are ones that I have personally hand drawn and then turned into a stamp. Right. So I'm just letting that dry and then I will be able to go back and add, add more if I need to, make it more intense and whiter because I do like that these are a paint pen which means that you can layer. So if you want some more tips on using paint pens, my August art journal class which is available online, we are going to be using your paint pens in that and having a play and working out how, that, how they can work over acrylic paint. There we go. I'm going to hit that with the heat tool. Maybe. Yes. I've now decided that those leaves should have been green. So I do have my green brush tip pen here and I'm going to go over the top with green. Oh, that's a better pop. And actually it's worked quite well because it's got a base of white underneath it. So none of that pink will come through, hopefully. And all I need to do once this one is dry is just go over and add a little bit of detail where I have inadvertently covered it up. <sighs> okay. So yeah, definitely pop back if you are free at 1.30 Adelaide time because I will do a swatch of the new Lindy's, which I have not even done yet. I have not had the opportunity to play with them. So I can't wait to do that um, and I will have a bit of a play and seeing how we go, I might do a little bit of creating. Oh, I've only given myself about an hour or so for that live, so we'll wait and see. Welcome to those of you tuning in. I'm doing a little bit of creating here today using acrylic paint in my handmade DIY journal uh, and all of the products that I'm using here are available on nataliemay.com.au. So I'm using some All and Create stamps, which you'll probably find these stamps or very similar ones if we've sold out in our clearance section and we do have them in our All and Create section. I do believe, according to um, the team at All and Create, we have got the biggest range of All and Create in Australia, which is pretty freaking awesome. So if we don't have it, I'm pretty sure it's either on its way in or we can order it in for you. So make sure that you have a look on the website on nataliemay.com. Oh, that's hot. nataliemay.com.au and we can make that happen for you. So all I'm going to do now is just add a couple of little doodly lines and sharpen up any areas that I had painted over with the paint pens. So just giving it a little bit of detail. So as part of journaling, everything that I've done here is kind of in the steps of how I like to create. In creating a, a painty background first or building a background, then I have gone in with stamping and, or sorry, with stenciling next, which is a common thing to add to your backgrounds. Then I have gone in with stamping, with black and added dimension, because of course, black and white add dimension to our projects. 
I started working on our focal point here. That's our focal point. And now I am working on finishing the page, which is the detail. Uh, there's one more step that I will add in a moment, which will be adding the wording because a journal page generally does need to have some sort of wording attached to it. And I'm going to use one of my new collage papers with the cheeky phrases on them, the unfiltered thoughts for that. All right, so, oh, you know what? That's worked so much better than I thought it would. All right, um, Melissa has just commented, when is the third guest teacher going to be announced? And I'm gonna be announcing it about 2, 2.30 Adelaide time. Okay. So I just want to, that's still a little wet, so I'm just going to heat set her. Actually, no, I won't. I've got to cut her out now. Let's find my scissors. I'll pop her aside and she can continue to dry. And now I'm going to cut out this cheeky babe. So a good pair of scissors makes all of the difference when you are fussy cutting. So I hate fussy cutting. It is not my chosen superpower at all. Um, Kerry ann I should have pre-planned this and got flew you over to do sit next to me and do all my fussy cutting. Um, so that's exciting with that. Not my favourite thing to do. But that's okay. I have other strengths. So you just have to bear with me a second while you watch me cut up paper. Um, I do find that I can't work with super fine scissors. For me, I struggle. My hands, I don't know if my hands are too big or I'm too uncoordinated. So the only thing that really works for me if I'm gonna be fussy cutting is to use a scissor like I'm using here, which is the Tim Holtz scissors. And using a, you know, something that I can get my whole hand in. I also find the uniquely creative ones are really nice to use. Um, they released those earlier this year. They are super duper sharp. Um, and I do think they're a fantastic option for a really good tool. Um, dun, dun, dun. I forgot to give her socks. That's okay. Uh, so yeah, having a, a good pair of scissors, like you, you know, you like your mum's sewing scissors that you don't let the kids use or the husband use. My husband has his own set of these scissors, so he has no excuse to, to pinch mine. Um, but yes, a pair of scissors makes all of the difference. Around here, around here, around here. So over on nataliemay.com.au, you will find our specials for the weekend. So we have got 15% off distress products, inks, stamp, um, stamp like for stamping. We have got 15% uh, off the distress sprays as well. You can also get 15% off Paper Rose products. So we have a great range of papers from Paper Rose. Uh, fantastic collection of papers, actually. They've brought out some beautiful new collections, as well as some stencils and some stamps from Paper Rose um, and some sentiment sheets. So make sure you have a look in the Paper Rose section on the website. We also have 15% off of Vicky Booten products. So if you do love a Vicky Booten product, it would be a bonus for you to jump on and have a look. So Vicky Booten, of course, as you know, is coming out to Australia in November this year, coming to see us right here in Adelaide for the most incredible two-day event that you have ever seen. So it's going to be a Vicky extravaganza. Um, it is going to be a Vicky extravaganza for sure. 
and she is creating a ton of projects for this event. So we are, and she's using a stuff that her the best of Vicky Booten. So she's using all of her favorite products from all of her collections. Um, we are talking some mixed media elements. We are talking a mini album. If you want to have a a day with the girls or a couple of a weekend away with the girls, this is the one to do to book. So uh, we I've got ninety cartons of stock. That's what you heard. Ninety cartons of stock in my studio at home. So the kit that you get included in the price is, is mind-blowing. So you get so much stuff. So here in Adelaide, we have got a fantastic air-conditioned venue where everybody is going to have half a trestle each to work on. Um, you, oh, that's not very good, hang on. You do need to organise your own transport and accommodation. Uh, but we can't wait for this event. It is going to be so much fun. We still have a small handful of seats still left and you you just need to book it and go, you know what? I'm going to kick myself if you don't if I don't go. All right, so Vicky and I have known each other personally and socially for a number of years, uh, which is the reason why she's coming to Adelaide. So she, Vicky asked if we could catch up after her cruise. And I said, yeah, of course you can. But you've got to come and teach a class here. And I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me, guys. Oh, a horrible sound on camera. I'm sorry. I swore I wasn't going to do that on camera, but I had to defer the big horrible sneeze. Um, so yes, the Vicky event is going to rock your world um, and we are absolutely thrilled to have that happening. When the event gets closer, there will be a list up on the Facebook group of what you need to bring, uh, but she is, we haven't released that yet, so, but it'll be just, you know, your basic toolkit sort of situation. Um, what else is happening? Our retreat is, there's still a a very small handful of things, of seats available for our retreat in May next year. Um, you do know that that is the event in Australia that you cannot miss out on. And there will be more information on that a little bit later. Um, other than that, come on, let's just get this done. Normally I would cut out the bit under her arm here but I don't have the patience for that today and I still have to put the title on and I'm sure you guys have got other things to do. So let's work that down there. All right, two girls cut out. I feel like she needs to go on that side and she needs to go on that side. And before I do anything else, I'm going to choose the title because that will def also decide where she's going to go, where the girls are going to go. Um, all right. Ka uh, Karen's coming to our retreat. Karen, oh, 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 we are super excited to see you as well, my friend. Okay. The girls. I feel that they need a super cheeky statement. So this is the super cheeky unfiltered thoughts or bits and pieces of it because of course I've been cutting into it um I really loved these I just felt the need to put something super cheeky into paper so there's some really funny things on here just because I'm smiling doesn't mean I like you I might be picturing you on fire love that my favorite outdoor activity is getting my packages and bringing them inside being a functional adult seems rather excessive uh, uh, what else can I read out on camera? How can I take over the world if I can't remember the plan? Uh, so there's some really funny ones here. So what am I going to go with today? I think this one here. If you're waiting for me to give a shite 
take a number and get in line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off that big area. And then I'm going to use some thick double-sided tape and stick it onto here because I want to have it on white and I want it to stand out. Is that enough? Oh yeah, perfect. And I want it to stand out. So that means I've got this leftover piece of cardstock here. Oh, Julie, I'm looking forward to seeing you, my friend. I haven't seen you in a little while. I did watch a, a video that you were in the other day, actually. All right, so that's my title. So I can put it on like that as a big word, but I feel like I want to put it into a strip maybe. So let's just test that first. I'm going to take that down there. That down there. That there. And am I going to put it on there as a block, as a big block? Oh, look, it's a bit bold. So I feel that it needs to be separated. And put them in as strips. So yeah, the, the, there's lots and lots and lots of you coming. So make sure that if you're not in the private Facebook group called Vicky Booten in Australia, you head over there and find it and request to join. Please make sure that you have your order number handy because you will not be approved for the group unless you have your order number. Uh, we have had way too many people try and join the group for, uh, for this event and I have had to ensure that people supply me with their order number because I've been hit with spammers on it. So um, so please if, join it because that's where all the information about the class is going to happen. So I have used, I'm using the art glitter glue here and as you can see, I'm using our glue stand so they are available online under the tools section alright see I just think that that looks a little bit better than trying to put it all on in one block, don't we think? Uh, and let's stick these girls on. Where am I going to pop them? I'm going to pop one here. Let's just stick her down. Now, it is a. this is on a, a heavier weight cardstock, so I need to go right to the edges with my glue. And then I'm going to have to anchor her down so that she's not too curly. Now, I am going to draw some lines under her feet in a minute so that she's not floating. And then this girl here, maybe she should have gone there. No, I might stick it. Um, and then this girl here, she's going to be anchored down on that side. So... There we go, I am almost finished this little project. Um, I hope I didn't make this look too complicated. Using the handmade DIY journal by nataliemay.com.au. Um, pop over there and have a bit of a look and I'm sure that you will be able to create your own little projects like the lovely our brand ambassador Jackie did. 
Jackie used uh, is using hers to put her artist trading cards in. And she's put a, a picture in our Facebook community of, of how that project looks. And I can tell you right now, it's bloody incredible. She's done an amazing job on that. So well done, Jackie. Um, and Jackie is a paper lady. She's not all about uh, mixed media, but Jackie has created something that is fabulous for her needs and something to put her uh, artist trading cards in, uh, which is fabulous. So yay to you, Jackie. All right, I have finished this here. One thing I am going to do, though, and it's bugging me. I've got little bits under her arms, and I'll do that off camera. So I'll bring it up for you to have a bit of a look at here. So you can see there we've used those cheeky words. The girls are stuck down, and I've just done those little juggy lines down there to anchor her to the ground so that she's not floating. Um, I think that that is wonderful. So there you go, guys. Building a bright, funky little art journal page. I really love this. These leaves here completely lift it and uh, make it look amazing. I think it looks really, really clever. So, all right, there you go. So I'm going to take a photo of that, pop it in the um, on a Facebook page, and I'm going to link a few of the products that I have used so that you can find them nice and easily. Uh, of course, today you will find these items here discounted on our website and they are automatically um, discounted at the checkout don't forget postage is not free you do need to pay for postage um, you can use the no judgment at the checkout so you can build on and add to your order uh, so please just take a moment before you finish at the checkout to ensure that you are paying for postage so I don't have to get in contact with you in a couple of days' time. I look forward to seeing you back here at 1.30 Adelaide time to swatch some Lindy's. See you, girls.